Good morning, everybody. It's bright and early here. It's like 6.30 a.m. Got a fun day ahead of me. I'm heading out to Area 19. Gonna be launching from Victoria and doing some spearfishing, diving, and uh, showing some kids the ropes. Uh, someone had reached out to Diving Sports, offered us a day out on the water. In turn, uh, we gotta teach this kid, uh, kids actually, uh, a little bit of knowledge on the water for safety, so I uh, jumped on that opportunity. Ashraf was gonna join, but uh, he's a week away from being a dad, so everybody wish uh, Ashraf luck uh, and his wife. Uh, so they're gonna have a baby, that's pretty exciting stuff. I'm sure he's a little bit stressed out, but you got it, Ashraf, don't worry. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna hit the road. I'm picking up Fred, uh, he's coming in Lou. Uh, we're gonna go uh, cruise around some random reef and explore the water, the ocean. I'm gonna hit the road. I get an hour, 50 minute drive to go get Fred and then another 25 minutes or so to the marina. So a lot of driving today. Thank God for flex fuel. Could definitely be a lot worse. With the price of fuel and cost of living, these trips aren't getting any cheaper. With that said, I can't think of a better way to spend my time and money. Well, besides with family. All right, see you, Fred. All right, man, you're taking a sweet time. You should be going faster than that. At least four or five meters of it, at least. That's good, man. Yeah, and that's right next to the ferry prop wash. Should we just dive here, then? Uh, let's <laughs> risk it. The sun's not out, but the water's looking flat, Con. We definitely got lucky with the conditions. Actually, I was supposed to do this last weekend on the west coast. We get two days out there planned, but we had to cancel due to weather. Uh, so this is actually in lieu of last week. Nice boat, dude. I like right it. Away. Holy <laughs> hey, hey. I didn't know that we, we actually going with celebrity. Oh, yeah, yeah. When it's that good at the bottom, yeah. the top, usually it's going to be better at the bottom. I'm saying so too, this man. It's crazy low tide. And crazy good visibility. Matthew, nice to meet you, man. M&M, like... And like Michael, nice to meet you, man. Yeah. Nice to meet you guys. Maldi's quite the dad. The enjoyment he gets by showing his kids a good time is something to inspire to. Kudos. Once we geared up, we hit the water south for about 45 minutes to try and catch slack for our first dive. Right, we just got to the spot here. The current's pulling good. Luckily, uh, we're supposed to die off in about a half hour or so. And there's usually a little back eddy here. I go to the spot a handful of times. Uh, but I'm really stoked. The viz looks awesome. You can see the bottom of the reef through the kelp. Uh, so it should be some good diving, even if we don't see the fish we're looking for. I was the first in the water. When anchoring in high current areas, it's always best to do a quick dive to ensure you have a good hold on the anchor when possible. I spotted a link card, so I had the guys throw me my gun. I quickly mounted my GoPro and went to work. During the excitement, I forgot to hit the record button until I had already pulled the trigger. But I found the ling on the first attempt and caught my first ling caught of the season. And Fred wasn't too far behind me. It was turning out to be quite the dive, to say the least. The visibility was very nice and the reef was looking pretty healthy. I hate using the word epic, but there was no better way to explain it. The current was really strong here, but that's what brings in all the life. Seriously though, just look at this. Okay, now back to spearfishing. Matthew and Mike both got certified in British Columbia, but have minimal experience spearfishing here. It was really exciting to watch them spear their first fish in local waters. They'll be heading to Winter Harbor in the coming months for some crazy diving. So I was happy to share some insight with regards to sustainability and safety. Nice work, guys.
These are called brown rockfish, not to be confused with quillback or copper. So many species, it's hard to keep track. The DFO doesn't have the budget to test rock scallops for biotoxins, so they're closed indefinitely over the majority of Vancouver Island. Too bad as they taste delicious. Something tells me these periwinkles failed to get the message. Pretty cool, eh? Towards the end of my dive, I was doing some deeper drops. I still don't dive with a watch, but I'm thinking somewhere around 15 meters. There was a lot of life at depth too. My buddy Barry recently referred to lingcod as ling dog, and ever since then, I've never looked at them quite the same. I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel guilty after I take these beautiful fish from a reef. But at the end of the day, it sure beats buying them from a store. Some people think lingcod are pretty ugly, but look at those big puppy dog eyes. This was one of my favorite dives so far this season, but I think I say that each time I go out. That's definitely not a bad problem to have. Thanks for the invite, Waldy. We ended up doing really good at that first spot. Really nice dive in here. It's been a couple years. I got my link on, so did the guys, so we got our limit today. A few rockfish were shot and a green ling or two. Uh, so we're gonna keep cruising, go hit up some vertical walls, and probably just do some dive, maybe a top up our limits with a couple more green ling and I'll possibly look for some crab from there. They're gonna pull the anchor, the conditions here are awesome, good visibility. You know, the current was a bit strong in the morning when we jumped in, but super calm right now. Yeah, I can't ask for any better weather than this. This is great. From there, we headed a ways north to the Pender Bluffs. It had been years since I dove here, and my gut was telling me to check the regulations for any changes. And to my surprise, as of 2022, this area is now an interim sanctuary from June 1st to November 30th, and no vessel entry or fishing is permitted. These measures were put in place to minimize interference on one of the southern resident killer whale key forging areas. With that said, we proceeded to take the most direct route out of the closure and quickly found ourselves a backup plan. We checked on a new spot and with endless coastline available in the area, there was no shortage that's for sure. The spot we selected ended up being a bit of a letdown. However, our real goal was to give Waldy some experience manning his boat with divers in the water. We were on a wall, so anchor was not an option. I found an old Coke bottle and then we got cruising. Last spot, we're all on our last legs, but we're gonna take a quick peek for a Dungeness Crab. Okay. Might see some, might not, but uh, I love this spot regardless. We set the anchor, 15 feet of water, and then uh, one last dip. If you're looking for Dungeness Crab, the sandy bottom with eelgrass is a pretty safe bet. The structure isn't as exciting as a rocky offshore pinnacle, but you can still find some neat critters, like this helmet crab. I was considering trying to cook one up, but I opted to save that for another day. You okay there, great scalping? Okay, just checking. I only looked around for about 20 minutes or so, but I was able to find one keeper. I've spent countless summers dropping crab traps off Sydney Spit, so for me, I was pretty excited to explore the bottom. This place gets hit hard for crabs, so I was even more excited not to swim away empty-handed. How'd you do, man? Oh, man, it was crazy. I saw a lot of crabs. Uh, I saw a bunch of those ones climbing the kelp, too. Oh, I even yeah. saw a small dungeon is drag a fish that was three times its size. <laughs> That's awesome. Which is hilarious. I got a crab pretty huge. You got like a seven incher, man. Pitch in my eye. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the trip was worth it. Definitely got a couple crab there. I got one keeper. The other guys got I don't know, two or three. That guy on the top was massive. He's at least like seven inches. That's crazy. Man. All right, now time to cruise. Get some food. We're all hungry. Hit the road. I guess hit the ocean. We cruised back to the launch and Waldy took us all out for a meal at White Spot. It was a long day on the water and a solid meal is just what we all needed. Thanks again, Waldy. Thanks for picking me up and uh, yeah, thanks for coming, man. That was really fun. Yeah, that was a really lot, good time. A lot cheaper when I don't have to take the car. And uh, I'm gonna stress free too. Cheers, man. Uh, have a safe ferry. Thanks. All right, cheers. Have a good one. <laughs> yeah, awesome. yeah.
Well, nice to meet you guys. And it was really, really <laughs> fun time. Yeah, fun trip. Right. Always a pleasure to go for a trip with a legend. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Thanks, man. Thanks. And uh, yeah, we got some food in the back. Yeah. You gonna help me paint? Yes. You're gonna be a great painter, aren't you? Yes. All right, we're gonna paint this fish float I found. Oh, Banfield off the coast, some lost fishing debris. And we're gonna repurpose it and throw it on that palm tree over there with the other ones. All right, so Sailor, this is a game plan. This is gonna be pretty messy. So we're gonna put some paint on the brush and then we're gonna throw it on this float. Yeah. All right, let's not make too much of a mess. Deal? Yes. Oh, awesome job, baby. Yeah, you're doing it. This needs to dry, but uh, yeah, it should look good out here. A little better than it did, anyways. Sucks that this stuff makes its way in the ocean, but at least we can repurpose it and add some little beachy nautical decor to our garden. Just one more shout out to Matthew, Mike, and Maldi for a great day on the water, Fred for joining on a moment's notice, and Diving Sports for setting everything up. Also, a huge shout out to my Patreons and loyal viewers for all the continued support. Throw the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It's a free way to help my channel out. Peace and love, everybody.